Panther fans, get ready for a deep dive on all 22 because the, the film, film don't lie. lie. I just want everybody to know the pre-show was spectacular. Spectacular. Yes. Yeah. Spectacular. That will be a new Netflix special. Mm. That will knock Dave Chappelle right off the top of the charts. Right off. Our, our pre-show. So a acapella edition we so, had going there. Yeah, so really yeah. check on the Netflix. But guys, hey, the big time, prime time, well, not quite, but game coming up, playoff game, Panthers, wild card weekend, heading down to New Orleans to face the Saints for the third time. Third Let's time. get right into it because, hey, man, we were burning the midnight oil getting this film in last night. And uh, we want to know what did we learn from the Panthers' first two meetings with the Saints and what will help us in this game? Well, I think, you know, you got to start with that rushing attack. It's hard to say that with New Orleans. You always think of Drew Brees, but the rushing attack for them has just been fantastic this year with Ingram and Kamara. Those guys have just uh, been killing us in those first two games that we had against them. They're averaging nearly uh, 150 yards per game in the two outings that we had and was a big part of the reason we lost those games. So, this team just needs to be on point, first and foremost, with the running game. Well, Mike, I mean, drilling down into specifics, uh, it has to come down to gap control, doesn't it? It comes down to gap control. But one of the things I want everybody to understand is we have the personnel to beat this team. Sometimes you're outmatched and outgunned, and you don't have a chance. We have the personnel to do the thing. There are times where we beat ourselves by not being in the right spot. And uh, in particular, in the gap control, uh, we talked about it before, but, uh, you know, the, the big run that I think um, that the Saints had was just because one guy got a double team star, had a double team, got bumped out of his gap. Everybody else is in their spot. But it just shows you when you're in a gap control defense, if someone's late getting to their gap or is outside their gap, that ball is going to find that hole. So gap control is going to be big. If everybody's in their gaps, we give ourselves a chance to win. It's already going to be hard. But we can't make it easy for them. But you say, and let me ask you this: because if you're approaching a week like this, you're playing a division opponent. You had the game in Atlanta. That means the uh, the pot pie is ready. That's right. Uh, we'll take that <laughs> I'm out. I'm always pie thinking pie. about food. Yeah, we will get that pot pie out the oven. Um, but the bottom line on that is. Do you go back now and watch those two games against the Saints more so than going back to watch the, the season-ending loss in Atlanta? No, absolutely. You go, you go back to the Saints because this is the way this league is structured. Whatever hurts you, they are going to try again. So you can count, like if 15 plays hurt you in the two games, count on it, count on it, like mama's apple pie, count on it <laughs> that they are going to try it again. Now, I don't know when, but at some point in that game, you're going to get all 15 of those plays. So you need to go back and watch that. Refresh your memory on how they did it. They might throw some other wrinkles in there, but they will try you on those 15 plays. Well, I want to talk about that young man playing for the New Orleans Saints. I, I called him Alvin Scamara, Scare Mara, mm -hmm. because when you look at it right now as, as one of the, the newest players in the NFL, I think there are teams out there that say, hey, we don't want to mess with this guy. Right, Kev? No doubt. I mean, the guy has been awesome as a rookie, rushed for over 700 yards so far this season. And on top of that, 81 receptions. I mean, he is getting targets all over the place. He's getting the ball a ton. And then when you factor in one other thing, we, we know what he can do in the running game and then the passing game. But my goodness, against the Bucks, comes out of nowhere with a 106-yard kickoff return. And I think, you know, a big reason that was so successful is really uh, had some fantastic blocks by those guys on that special teams unit. And that's something that the Panthers will have to really dial in on and make sure that doesn't happen to, the, to them. Uh, on that return, uh, several double teams that really were productive at the point of attack where they wanted to return that ball. And they were going to the right side. The left side did a nice job of just getting their bodies between the defender and where Kamara was going to be to slow them down. Then at the point of the attack, you've got two double teams that uh, annihilate blockers that open up a huge alley that really, I mean, Kamara's scary now. He's scary, but a lot of guys could have run through that hole for that 106-yard touchdown. But Saying that, it's he's just a multidimensional weapon that has just brought that offense from being, um, you know, so kind of predictable with the passing game to now it's truly balanced, and that's what's made it so tough for teams. And he makes a lot of things look look easy. 
Right, Mike? Yeah. It, you know, he when watching the film and breaking it down, he reminded me of Christian McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. He's our version. He could run the ball inside the tackles, but he also has good hands in the passing game. And when you looked at when they moved him into the slot and he had outside receiver, they just run a simple wheel route to where he's inside, but then he bends to the outside towards the um, to the sidelines. And obviously Drew Brees, we know what he can do. He just puts this ball and finds a mismatch and just lays it right there. Kamara's got really, really good hands. He's got fast feet, but he has really good hands. I, I have to believe that even if they leave the sideline uh, with – Kamara and Ingram in the game, and you're as a defense counting 21 personnel, I, I think you have to look at that as 10, yeah, 10 personnel. You do. I really do think you have to match up in some cases with a nickel uh, in the game to, to match up with him, even if he lines up in the backfield. Because yeah. he's doing some things right now that uh, just really stress the defense and uh, you know, simple r- runs. He had that seven-yard touchdown, and on that, I, I'm just like, man, he's making that yeah. look easy. And he didn't have it that easy at Tennessee. And uh, it, it's just really uh, – and, it, and it's not about one player. Here again, this is the New Orleans Saints. Right. So you know Drew Brees is going to get the ball in the hands of multiple receivers where your defense is weak. And I don't mean weak as personnel. I mean, Mike, you know you can't cover the whole field. Right. He'll find those holes, those windows, and get that ball in there. And uh, Ted again, you know, he's got a chip on his shoulder. Well, when we looked at the uh, the the against the Bucks, that defense of the Saints showed a few flaws uh, at the end of that game, and it ended up costing them, didn't it, Kevin? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, the Saints had this game pretty much locked down as you look at it late in the fourth quarter. The score, 24-16, so there's an eight-point differential there. And they go, they allow the Bucks to go on an 11-play, 95-yard drive. Uh, they only had a minute 58 to be able to do that. And they just marched right down the field, starting on their own five-yard line and just did a really nice job. And for me, you know, you look at this thing, the start of it is fourth and ten because, you know, some bad plays happen to start that drive, but then they get to a 4th and 10 situation on their own 5-yard line. And Jameis Winston and Cameron Brait find a way to hook up to keep the chains moving forward and keep hope alive. And that's what they did as they began to kind of nickel and dime their way down the field. And, you know, this is something, you know, you look at the Saints, this game should have been put away. They should have been able to get this thing done, but they gradually let this thing slip away. And, and you notice a- Something on that uh, plate. Yeah. Well, that fourth and ten. I mean, you got them backed up, and the left defensive end does a nice move, has a nice speed to a bull rush, knocks the the right tackle back about two three yards, but then he pulls up and he goes towards the running back. If he continues to go towards the quarterback, he either sacks Winston or hits Winston as he's throwing the ball. I believe that that pass would not have been completed if he would have continued on the path that he was on. And I think that, when you look at that when, on, on film day the next day, you're really kicking yourself on that play right there because the game could have been over. Well, I know they're kicking themselves on the play when the uh, Bucks had first and 10 at 39 mm-hmm. with 15 seconds to yeah. go. 15 seconds. Yeah, and, That's and, it. and on this play, Winston is able to hit, hit Godwin, 39-yard touchdown. And for some strange reason – um, you leave your zone coverage, you go to a, a, a man, a matchup there, and there was no help for the corner. And I, I, I doubt we would see that. But if we do see that, the green light has to be on for our offense to attack single coverage, which is something, and this will just fall right into our next subject, that we were not able to do against the Falcons. Make no bones about it. We had one long play in that game. That was that long pass to Funches. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, you know, the game was close to being out of reach at that point. Cam says don't panic. That's obvious. But what is the work that has to be done? Well, uh, you look at this team, I think that, you know, you the body of their work through this season has been outstanding. And they've done some great things throughout this year. They stumbled offensively the last couple of games. But I think that's what Cam Newton's saying is, look, uh, might have been a little dip in our performance, but we're getting right back to work, and this guy and this team, for that matter, knows there's a lot of experience on that side of the – I mean, the whole team with playoffs. I think they understand what's going on, 
Not I, didn't, I didn't say <laughs> it. <laughs> but they understand what it takes and that extra effort. Now everything's going to dial up again. Uh, I think you know these guys have definitely been around this facility a lot. A lot more you know time has been spent here than maybe during the regular season because they know it's uh, it's one it's one game and you either keep moving on or you're done. And that, that these guys realize it's preparation and they got to get that preparation in. The games are one on Sunday and Saturday this week mm -hmm. by what they do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. No doubt. I mean, I mean, you know, they line up. You want energy. You want, you know, a sense of urgency. But really, it's it's that urgency to prepare Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They get that done. They set themselves up in great shape to win the game Sunday. I agree. Everything with KD <laughs> said, he took it right out of my mouth. The, the, no, he took it right out of my mouth. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one in the trenches. Mm -hmm. Okay? I think that we've talked about all these weapons, but if – the defensive line can get after a breeze and make him uncomfortable. That's going to be in our favor. I believe if the offensive line can block for Cam, I think we got to get Cam running. When you know he looks, you know when you look at his his rushing, um, you know last week at you know five point four a carry. When he's running the ball and he's doing his first down signs, that bodes really well for the Panthers' offense and this team. So between those two, offense and defensive line, um, I believe that this game could be won in the trenches right there. Mm -hmm. and, when, and when you get to a, a position like this, and you guys I know can comment on this much better than I can, but the bottom line is for whatever time you have left leading up to that kick on Sunday, this has to be your number one priority. And I'm going to show my age here because in this age of millennials, there's so much coming at you. There's so much available to you. Guys, at this point, with what's at line, do you take all that, all this, all of it, and put it aside and focus on the task? And hey, I'm not saying you turn into a robot and, you know, oh, I'm ready. You know, but yeah. isn't there time? Yeah. I think the time's now. And I think as coordinators on both sides of the ball – I would keep it simple because I'd want my guys playing fast. The game's going to ratchet up. The game is going to get faster today. Each week it's going to get faster. So I want my guys to play smart, but I want them to play fast and use their ability on the field to win this football game. And I think it's good that, you know, just a few weeks ago they were down in New Orleans to play that game. They're familiar with that environment. They know how loud it's going to be. That, you know, I hear a lot of fans kind of talking about how it's going to be so rough. It's a later game, and the New Orleans fans are going to be all liquored up or whatever they do down there eating their poor boys and, and yep. their hurricanes, mm, drinks, yeah, whatever are, that is. Okay, I, I heard all that it. aside. Somebody said it. I mean – it is what it is. They've been in some tough, hostile environments this year. I don't think that's as big as part of the preparation is, uh, like I said, during the week getting ready for this game. And, you know, essentially, you know, Mike hit it right on the head in terms of it comes down to that offense and defensive line because you look at what the defensive line did against Atlanta and that powerful running attack with Freeman and Coleman. That's something that they can replicate and do again in a hostile environment, they did it in Atlanta, shut down that running game. They can do that against the Saints. They might not shut it down completely, but they can contain it and give themselves a chance. And then the offensive side in the trenches, can you control the ball? You know, in those games that we uh, – the last game that we had against them did not rush very strong against them. We couldn't sustain drives. That allowed that – uh, Saints offense to be on the field a whole lot more. Time of possession was much more in favor of the Saints. They got to find a way to keep the ball, maintain some drives, and get that uh, Breeze and Kamara and Ingram to keep them on the sidelines, and that will help immensely. And, you know, when that's going on, keeping drives alive, even if you settle for field goals, that's still not an opportunity for the Saints to get anything done. So I think it's, it's, it comes down to those trenches. You know, watch those offense and defensive linemen. Those receivers and quarterbacks are going to make beautiful plays out there, and it's going to happen. There's going to be some things that you wow you. But, man, if you want to see where the work's getting done, you got to look at the big folks down low. All right. And, and just one more point on that. I mean, confirm for me, guys, because you've been, you've been in this position. Both of you played on a team that made that push that fell short. Sorry to bring that up. But at this point, as you sit in this chair, and if you were back in that locker room, would you be spreading the message that it's worth it, whatever it takes? Absolutely. Because for somebody, this might be their only shot. You know, and, and, and for us, that was our only shot 
you know, that we took advantage of to, to go to the Super Bowl. So this could be your only shot. You don't know t- tomorrow's not promised. So um, you got to lay it all on the line. You know, the majority of the NFL, they're on beaches right now. You know, 20 teams are yeah, sitting at home. They're sitting at home. They're, they're already on vacation. You have the opportunity to extend your vacation uh, on this football field and um, push that out. So I think that you've got to do whatever it's going to take. And that means not only in the film room, but also might mean in the training room. So if you've got some boo-boos, go get that <laughs> stuff taken care of. And I'll add, listen, I played a long time, and it wasn't until my last year of football that I actually got to go to a Super Bowl. And we did lose that game, but it was a fantastic battle that I'm proud of that Mike and I were in that game and um, one of the best Super Bowls ever. But what I remember is that journey to get there and – You prepared, you had to teach the young guys, I was an older guy, teach the young guys that there's no better feeling than a playoff win and going on to the next week because then it becomes bigger. Then it becomes bigger after that if you get that win. We had a home playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys and stomped a mud hole in them with Steven Davis, and this place was rocking. We had to go down to St. Louis, over to St. Louis, to play them the greatest show on turf. 14 point uh you know favorites the whole deal with that and we went down there and took care of business and the celebration in that locker room right after Steve Smith catches that ball in double overtime it can't be explained i mean it it, it was grown men acting yeah. like kids it was christmas day times 20 it was fantastic then obviously the NFC championship game was a great great victory it got us to the Super Bowl and that's the thing that these older guys have to share with the younger guys is look uh, you're not going to feel good after this win you're going to feel something you've never felt before because you get to go on it's all worth it it's all man I tell you what that's type of stuff from you two guys that I love hearing every week that you can't get anywhere else Panther fans because as we always tell you if it happens between the lines, we'll talk about it. And these two guys have been between the lines. That wasn't the out. Slow down. Because <laughs> I want to I want to remind everybody about our programming this week. Um, I'll be in New Orleans. You guys will be on set here for game day. Mike, That's right. Mike coming in for special game day edition. And uh, that will be on our Spectrum News channel. Also, WCNC uh, this week, 1130, live. Live. No trapeze. Live. I mean, no, no safety net. That'll be live. No, I won't be live from New Orleans. I'll, I'll let that cat out of the bag. But That's we, my game we, day. I'll get yeah. warmed up. I'll be ready live. <laughs> exactly. Just so we look forward to that. Hey, as always, if it happens between the lines, we'll talk about it here on All 22 because the, the film, film don't, don't lie. lie. We'll see you here next time. That's Calling right. it.